secrets of the Black Dahlia. Welcome to the Tales of Terror, where we explore the mysterious universe and solve the puzzles that capture our attention. We're exploring the Black Dahlia today, one of history's most infamous unsolved murders. Elizabeth Short, a young actress with dreams of fame, was brutally murdered and discovered in 1947 in Los Angeles. She earned the nickname the Black Dahlia in the media as a result of the horrible manner in which her body was mutilated and displayed. Despite years of investigation, the case remains a terrifying mystery with an endless supply of theories and suspects. Was it a passion crime, ritualistic conduct, or something much more sinister? The episode will explore the disturbing investigation details as we look into the bizarre circumstances behind the Black Dahlia murder. Elizabeth's short story begins in 1924, when she was born in Boston, Massachusetts. Her family faced hardships, moving to Portland before settling in Medford. Her father, a builder, lost their savings in the 1929 stock market crash and disappeared under suspicious circumstances. Short's mother, a bookkeeper, started supporting the family financially. Sadly, this was just the beginning of their difficult road. Health issues plagued Short throughout her teenage years, and at the age of 15, she underwent lung surgery. Her mother took her to Miami in the winter to keep her health safe. However, things took a turn for the worse. Short dropped out of school, finding herself in an unfamiliar city with an uncertain future. Years later, Short received a letter revealing her presumed dead father was alive in California. She moved to Vallejo to be with him, but their relationship was strained, leading Short to start over elsewhere. Unfortunately, her situation worsened. She found herself in an abusive relationship with a U.S. Army Air Force sergeant and ended up in jail for underage drinking. As Short made her way to Southern California, she met Major Matthew Michael Gordon Jr., who brought hope and stability to her life. However, tragedy struck when Gordon died in a plane crash, leaving Short heartbroken, determined to move forward. She visited Lieutenant Joseph Gordon Fickling in Los Angeles, but remained plagued by unease. In January 1947, Short returned home after a trip with Robert Red Manley. However, her return took a sinister turn. Conflicting reports emerged about her last movements, with sightings at different locations. The suspense grew as the mystery surrounding her behavior deepened. On January 15, 1947, Elizabeth Short's mutilated body was discovered in a vacant lot by Betty Bursinger. The finding initiated one of America's most infamous murder cases. Short had been brutally killed, her body severed at the waist and drained of blood. The killer had slashed her face into a Glasgow smile and made cuts on her thigh and breasts. Her lower body was positioned away from the upper half, with her intestines neatly arranged beneath her buttocks. This grotesque posing earned her the moniker Black Dahlia in the press. A heel print and a cement sack with watery blood were found nearby, shocking the public and drawing attention to the crime scene. Autopsy Report and Media Coverage Elizabeth Short's murder was shockingly gruesome. The autopsy report revealed a scene of unimaginable horror. Her body was violently cut in half, drained of blood, and arranged in a horrifying pose. Ligature marks adorned her wrists, ankles, and neck. She suffered a brutal breast laceration, superficial cuts on her arms and chest, and fatal cuts on her face. The cause of death was hemorrhaging and shock from severe head blows. The autopsy even indicated possible rape, though no trace of sperm was found. The media sensationalized the case, using derogatory terms and portraying Short as a prostitute. They named her the Black Dahlia, capturing national attention. The press manipulated the narrative, misleading her mother and creating a twisted story of a crazed killer. This investigation revealed a sinister truth behind the murder, surpassing ordinary brutality. Murder Investigation In 1947, the infamous Black Dahlia case took a chilling turn. 
The Los Angeles Examiner received a disturbing call from someone claiming to be the killer. The caller praised the newspaper's coverage, promised to surrender, and taunted the police with the chase. Days later, a package arrived with Elizabeth Short's personal items, connecting a wealthy nightclub owner named Mark Hansen to the case. Despite the investigation, Hansen was cleared. The search continued, questioning the last person to see Short alive, Manley, who passed a lie detector test and was ruled out as a suspect. Over 150 potential suspects were interviewed. Then 750 investigators dedicated their efforts, but no evidence was found. False confessors emerged amidst intense media coverage. Then, on January 26, 1947, the examiner received a handwritten letter from the killer, claiming surrender in three days, yet the killer never appeared. Instead, another letter arrived, justifying the murderer. The Black Dahlia case remains unsolved, leaving a lingering sense of fear and dread. Suspects and Confessions The Black Dahlia murder of Elizabeth Short has held the public's attention for many years. Over 500 people, some of whom weren't even alive at the time of the terrible crime, have admitted guilt, despite the fact that investigators only received 60 confessions during the first probe. Since these admissions have been disregarded as fake, the case remains unsolved. One of the original detectives on the case, Ralph Asdell, believed he had interviewed the killer himself. He had seen a sedan parked near the vacant lot where Short's body was found and had followed the owner to a local restaurant where he worked. However, the sedan's owner was cleared of any involvement. Numerous suspects have been considered over the years, including Walter Bailey, Norman Chandler, Leslie Dillon, Joseph A. Dumais, Artie Lane, Mark Hansen, Francis E. Sweeney, Woody Gerthy, Bugsy Siegel, Orson Welles, George Hoddle, Fred Sexton, George Knowlton, Robert M. Red Manley, Patrick S. O'Reilly, and Jack Anderson Wilson. One of the most intriguing suspects was George Hill Hoddle Jr., accused by his son, Los Angeles homicide detective Steve Hoddle, of murdering Short and other victims. Hoddle Jr. had even been charged with raping his daughter, but was acquitted. He fled the country multiple times, spending several decades in the Philippines. The case remains unsolved, leaving us all wondering who the natural killer was and what dark secrets they took to their graves. We appreciate your participation in our disturbing exploration of the mysterious Black Dahlia case. There have been several ideas and suspicions put forth over the years in the unsolved Black Dahlia case. Was it a murder committed out of passion, a ritual murder, or something much more nefarious? Despite much inquiry, the mystery surrounding this frightening case remains unsolved. Join us for our next episode as we explore yet another spine-tingling mystery that will have you wondering about the mysteries that lie in wait. To remain up to date on our most recent true crime cases, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.